Say that loud, that wasn't a rhetorical question. Anybody have an idea? Here, before you answer that question, let me ask you another one. Was there a difference between how the Holy Spirit was given in the Old Testament than in the New Testament? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay? And in my Sabbath school class, we looked at Samson. You guys remember Samson? It says the Spirit would come upon him and he would do these unbelievably superhuman, superhuman deeds of strength, right? But the Spirit would come upon him and he would do that. That meant that he didn't have the Spirit living in him all the time. It would come upon him, and then it would leave. Come upon him, then it would leave. When they went to meet God, where did they have to go? They had to go to the temple, right? Do we have to go to the temple today to meet God? Where is the temple? You are the temple. This is what Christ did for us at the cross. At the cross, because of the shedding of His blood, because of the reconciliation that He gives, now God can live in us full time. Wow. Praise the Lord. The hope of glory. How much more glorious can you get than God living in you? Amen. Do you know who you are in Christ? Do you know how you got to be in Christ? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He wasn't exaggerated. When he said, there's no other way to the Father except by me, he was speaking truth because there is no other way. The Son of God, the only one to pay for your sins. And what does he ask for you or from you? He only wants your heart. But listen, if he wants your heart, he wants everything. Amen. Because you cannot serve two masters. You cannot be a fence sitter. Mm. Jesus said that he came and broke down that fence. That wall of partition. Yes. Is that right? Yes. No more fence sitting. Make up your mind for today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to decide. Do you love him? It's not does he love you because he has demonstrated his love for you in his death for you. The question is, is, do you love Him? Will you give your heart to Him today and tomorrow and the next day and all the days you have breath? Amen. That is what this Christian life and walk is about. Hallelujah. Will you serve Him? Did you hear what that word was? What was that word? Serve. Now, does He mean like a waiter or a waitress serves a customer? Or does he mean like a, like a, we have a president. For his subject. If, subject, thank you, Ray. Or is he talking about how a subject serves his king? And it's how a subject serves the king. Now, do you realize that back in the day, if you were under the rulership of a king, he had the right to ask you for your life. And uh, if you were a good subject, you gave it. Amen. Right? Uriah the Hittite, was he a good subject to his King David? Amen, brother. And was he willing to give his life to King David? All the way. Why? Because he was true. He loved the king. He loved the king. Wasn't that his motivation? Yes. Not only did he love the king, but he loved his God. Amen. And the two could not be separated. And if you love God and you love the king, then you sacrifice and you gave your life. Whatever the king wanted. Did Uriah the Hittite give his life? Yes. So listen, doesn't Jesus ask you the same thing? Yes. Those that lose their life for his sake will what? Find it. And those that are not willing to give their lives for his sake, what's going to happen to them? So listen, Jesus asks not for 20% of you. He doesn't ask for 80% of you. He doesn't even ask for 99% of you. What is he wanting? Why? He wants all of you. Why? Because you can't really love somebody if you only give your love partial. Amen. I can't love you 99%. What's that other 1% doing? Ooh. Right? <laughs> Christ wants your whole heart. Amen. And He has shown over and over and over and over again throughout the course of your life His love, His purity, His what 
be the word. His determination to save you. His total, thank you. Christ has shown his total commitment to you. And what he's wanting you to do is show that same to him. Amen. But you know what? As a fallen human being, you can't give total commitment. You can't give it to your wife. You can't give it to your kids. You can't give it to your dog. Amen. But through Christ living in you, the hope of the Lord, the one that produces character, you can give total commitment. Praise the Lord. Through Him, if Christ is up here and you are His subject and you've given your whole heart truly to Him, then you can give 100% of yourself to everybody else in your life. Mm -hmm. That's the difference between selflessness and selfishness. 1% of selfishness is 1% enough to get you into heaven. Amen. You guys understand that, right? So, Reading on. Verse 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. Verse 6. For when we were still without strength. What does that mean without strength? Does it mean that I worked too hard the night before and I just needed to rest and if I rested I'll have enough strength? Not capable. Save ourselves. Say it, Ricky. We can't save ourselves. And what did you say, right? Not capable. Not capable. Do you guys understand that this is the whole crux and the foundation of the gospel? This is the difference between Christianity and every other religion in the world. Every other religion is based on some type of works. If your good works outweigh your bad works, in the end, God will accept you. But God says, you're without strength, you can't do anything, and even your good works, to me, are like filthy rags. You need a righteousness that's outside of yourself that only I can give. And so I give it to you in the form of my son. Amen. And all I ask from you is that you take it. A gift. Is a gift really free? Hold on. Answer that question. If it's a gift, is it really free? Yes. Yes. If it's not free, then your strings attached and it's not a gift. And right? Wages. Yes. And it's wages. It's wages. That means that if you give this thing to me, you want something from me. What do I have to give to God? Only my heart. So when God looks at me, there's nothing that I say, well, God, why don't you use my talents? That's good enough. And God says, no. And it's like, well, God, why don't you use my voice? I sing really well. Not me. And he goes, no, it's not enough. Well, how about my brain? <laughs> the only thing that God sees is your heart. And He sees your heart. And He sees that you are without strength. You are incapable of changing that heart. And God says, I can do it. Here's the gift. All I ask is that you take it. Take it. Right? Amen. That's a free gift. Now, does the Bible say that it's a gift or a free gift? Free gift. And a free gift is a gift without strings attached. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever what? Does it say whosoever believes in Him will have everlasting life or should have everlasting life? How does it actually go? Okay. God has done everything that needs to be done for every person who's lived on this earth to ever be saved. Amen. Right? Amen. God doesn't have to do anything else. So all these other religions that teach another way, are they true or are they false? False. false. There's no other way for me to put that. If, if I'm narrow-minded, then praise Jesus Christ, I'm there reminded because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And you have to come to Him. God will work out for those people who never had a chance to meet Him. God has a plan for that. He has it worked out already. Amen. So don't worry about them, because that's the answer you always get. Well, what about no? What about you? You have heard about Jesus all your life. Have you accepted Him? 
Because if you are trying to find him through yoga, if you're trying to find him through Eastern mysticism, if you're trying to find him through Wicca or magic, you're going to be lost. One way, and that's the way through blood. His blood. Amen. Can I have a couple more minutes? <coughs> Okay, so listen, because we're going to get to verse 15 where it says this. And you're going to look, and it's not in italicized letters. So it's in the original. Okay? So God demonstrates, well, let's go to verse 6 again. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. And Paul thinks about it and says, well, wait a minute. Yet, perhaps even for a good man, somebody would even dare to die. But listen, God demonstrates his love towards us, and that while we were still sinners, enemies of God, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by whose blood? Yes. By Jesus' blood. Because without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. This is why Christ can say, I am the only way, because He is the only one that has done this. Did Buddha do it? No. Did Vishnu do it? No. Did Muhammad do it? No. Keep asking yourself, keep going through the names, did any of them do it? Jesus Christ. Amen. Did he do it? Yes. The only one. The only sovereign. <coughs> Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Jesus. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. Can you imagine being reconciled while you were still enemies? Now listen, I've done a lot of counseling. And I've never seen enemies come together before and be reconciled before they hashed out what their differences were, right? This is what God has done for us. This is why God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. Amen. God has reconciled us to Him, not from anything we ever did, but everything He has done. God has given it all. What He asks from you is to make a choice and a decision. That's your part. Your part is an exercise of the will. I think you know an amen for that. Amen. Okay. So, for when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son. Much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by Jesus' life. And not only that, that's enough. But not only that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received, what? This reconciliation. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because why? All That's why I told you earlier, God has lumped us all together in one boat. Amen. This is why none of us, no matter what our status in life is, no matter what our education is, or lack of education, we do not have the right to judge or look down on another person, because we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and we all need His salvation. Amen. Amen. Don't let your pride, and don't let your arrogance, and don't let your self-will keep you from being saved. We put up so many walls. And we have so many excuses of why we don't give our hearts fully and completely to Jesus Christ. God does miraculous things in our lives. And we take it and for that moment we are thankful to Him. But three, four, five days later we forget about it. A year later we don't even talk about it anymore. And yet God is still there asking and wooing and calling you to Him. But listen, God doesn't give you forever to make a choice. You have a certain amount of days in your life. And God knows the beginning and God knows the end. And if you have a major choice for Him, by that end, you have made your choice. Amen. So let's go down to verse 15. Verse 15 says, what's that first word? But. but. Don't you lie? I love that word. But. But the what gift? Free. Free. Now how many of you have a King James or a New King James? Is that word free gift in italicized letters? No. That means it's in the original language. It's a word for word translation. So it's not just gift, but it's a free gift. No strings attached. God has given this to the world and all He wants you to do is take it Amen. and make it yours. Okay. 
back in the past, sometime, and it probably had to be at least almost eight years ago, I stuck $4,000 behind my bed, and I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> My wife dropped something behind the bed, and she's got short little arms, and she can't reach behind there. So she asked me, can you see if you can find this? So what happens is, is we got this, this big old headboard thing, and there's a cubby hole that's probably like this wide behind it. Okay? And she'd have to crawl in there to get it. So I move the bed, I stick my hand in there, and I feel something. And you all know what money feels like, right? <laughs> so it's money. I, I knew it as soon as I felt it. I pulled out the $100 bill. I was like, ooh, that's so cool. <laughs> and my hand back in there, and there's more. And there's like a lot more. There's 40 of them things in there. And it's like, where did this come from? But again, you know, I, I to save money so that you don't spend it. You know what I'm saying? Because if you put it in your bank account, it'll go out of your bank account. If you have it somewhere where you see it every day and you want something, or your family wants something, or your children want something, then it usually goes. But if you hide it and nobody knows you have it, right? Uh, and you can't even find it. Well, the problem with hiding it, you can't find it. But listen. So, two days before that, I had two weed eaters stolen off my truck. Again. And uh, didn't have the money in my bank account because I had to go to bills. Already, that money was already spent. And I find $4,000 underneath my bed. Okay? And... That was enough money to buy those meters, and that money was probably spent in two and a half days because some other bills have come up. You guys know how that is, right? But if I didn't find that money, I wouldn't have the money to pay for that stuff that I needed, right? So listen, that money was a gift from me in my past. <laughs> At some point, I said to myself, let me put this away because I'm going to need it in the future, right? And so when my bank account was low and I needed something and there was no way that I had the strength nor the power to get it, I needed, I needed a miracle. I needed help from outside. And so my wife asked me, well, look for this thing behind me. I never found what she was looking for. Because once I saw the money, I totally forgot what she needed. <laughs> and I reached my hand in there. I felt that bill and I pulled out a hundred. It's like, <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And then started feeling around in there more and, and realizing there was a stack in here. That was a gift. That was a gift from my past for something that would happen in the future that I had no power to do anything about. That's the same thing God has done for you, only it was nothing from you or for you. It was all from Him. But it's a gift. You understand what the gift is? The gift is free without any strings attached. What God says is, I give this to you. I give you the freedom to choose whether you will accept it or not. When God so loved the world, did it mean he would save the entire world? He could. He would. And everything would be there. But they would have to take the gift. Right? They would have to take the gift. And that is an act of the will. That is a choice. Did God ever take away our free choice? Isn't that what this whole thing is about? Whether free choice can really be free, and through free choice, whether we can really worship and follow God without sin. Isn't that what this is about? See, because if it wasn't about free choice, like I told my Sabbath school class, God could have took Adam and Eve, the devil, and all those who followed him, and wiped them out and started all over again. Right? And he could have made a different version, Adam 2.0. <laughs> That didn't have the ability to sin. He would, he, take a robot. he would make a robot. Is that what God wanted? No. no. So again, this is about a choice. Everybody says, well, what's my part in this? Some people would say, you have no part. Yes, you have a part. Your part is your freedom to choose. You, as the Bible says, does the Bible say, God will choose for you this day? The Bible says, choose ye this day. Amen. Who you will what? Serve. Serve. Ricky, you had your hand up? Yeah. I just wanted to point out that we are his gift. <laughs> That's good. Okay, let's 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 
bring this to an end. Verse 15, but the free gift is not like the offense. That offense was the sin of Adam. For if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. You wonder why you use the word many and not all. I'm not going to answer that for you. All I know is John 3.16, and that says the world. That pretty much covers everybody, right? Okay. So, what Christ has done for you is he's given you the ability to be righteous in the sight of a holy God. He has given you the ability to stand before this God and have judgment passed in your favor. Explain that to me. How can a sinner have judgment passed in his favor to enter God's kingdom? And it can only come through God himself. That is righteousness by faith. That is Christ our righteousness. So listen, this is where I end. I want you to think about this because I want you to get the foundation right first. How are you saved? Are you saved by faith and works? Or are you saved by faith and grace alone? I thought I'd get a whole unanimous thing. Think about this, because this is this is this is it. This is the linchpin. Protestantism is going to look at you and say, "You say you're saved by grace and works," but I'm telling you that as a pastor of the Seventh Day Adventist Church, you are saved by grace and faith alone. You can only find salvation through Jesus Christ. You will never work your way into a right standing with God. Keeping the Sabbath doesn't do it. Giving tithes doesn't do it. Not eating meat doesn't do it. Okay? You're saved by faith in Him. Because it's only His righteousness that He gives to you that you're able to stand before God. That's the gift. Now, as you leave here today, what I want you to think about is, so where did works play into all this? Why do we keep the Sabbath? Why do we still preach about the law? Why do we abstain from certain foods? Ray, you had your hand up? Because I love my father and respect him. And can I just make one comment about the many word? Sure. The many word in the Greek is, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's P-O-L-L-O-Y. And for all your A students, that's Strong's 4183, and it means all. I don't know why they do many, but it means all. And see, that's, that's, that was the... Uh, the people who put together the actual King James Version, they had to make decisions of what words to use because of their, bi their bias. bias. Yes. <laughs> yes. So listen. Does the Bible say that you were created for good works? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. But do works have anything to do with your standing with God? No. no. Okay. Now when I ask this again, I want to hear everybody say Whatever your answer is. Does the Bible say you were created for good works? Yes. 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 Are you saved by your good works? No. no. That's unanimous, right? Right. Yes. Okay. So what are the works for? They're the Faith fruit that, works that shows whether I'm a good tree or a bad tree. Amen. Listen, if you are a child of the living God, then shouldn't that be seen? Yes. yes. Right? Or are you a uh, CIA undercover <laughs> operative for Christ? <laughs> Listen, there, there are many of us who, who, who that's, that's, that's our motive, our motif, excuse me, uh, our operating motif. We are CIA James Bond undercover agents for Christ. <laughs> if you look at me throughout the day and throughout the week, you won't know that I'm Christ, but if you ask me, I'll tell you who I am. Is that how it works? No. no. Deborah, what did you say? <laughs> Christ, Christ in us does the work. Yes. So listen. Why is good works important? Because that's, as Ray said, that's how you are able to see whether I'm Christ or whether I'm not. Listen. And this is where I close. When the prodigal son came to his senses, where was he at? In the pig pen. In the pig pen. Right? And did he come to his senses and say, you know, I'm tired of eating pig slop. My father has servants at home. He has all kind of food. I think I'll write a letter to him and see if he'll send me some of the food because I really like staying here in mud. No. He left. 
Right? He up. came to his senses and did what? Hold up. He went back to his father. Now, when he got to his father, didn't he have a whole work speech ready? And didn't he try to give it to his father? When the father came and saw him afar off, while the child was still rehearsing his speech, because he was getting close to home, he wanted to make sure he had it right, because he wanted his dad to accept him back. So he had all this worked out. You getting the, the, the work things here, right? Oh, yeah. So he had all this worked out. He'd come back. And he gets to his father, and his father's on the porch looking for him, right? Looking for him. And when he sees him, the father does what? Runs. Runs to him. Now, in Jewish society, men did not run because they were, like I told you, man dresses. And... <laughs> the father put all protocol aside. He did not care. He saw his son. His son who was dead, he was now alive. Oh, come back. Great. And he runs to him. And the boy tries to get this speech out. And what does the father do? I want to hear it. The father kisses him on the neck. The father gives him a ring. And the father does something about his smelly clothes. What does he do? Puts a robe around his boy. Now listen. He didn't put the robe around him first and then kiss him. Right? right? Amen. He grabbed that kid and he hugged him close. And he got that mess on him. This is my boy who was dead and he's alive again. I love my child and he's come home. And he held him close. And you know what happened? When he let that boy go, the stain that was on that boy was now on the father. And he gives him a robe, makes him clean, puts a ring on his finger saying that you are back in the family, son. Did the boy ever get out the speech? No. Did he need it? No. Because no works that he could ever have done could have brought him back into a right standing with the Father unless the Father gave him his love and gave him his robe.